Hi guys, how are you doing? Thank you once again for joining us for another study. Have you ever considered the great speakers and communicators of today? There's heaps of them, whether they're Christian or non-Christian. You know, there's been some great Christian communicators from Spurgeon to, to Billy Graham. You know, even non-Christians, there are so many people who are so good at getting a message across and they do that either with, with pictures or illustrations and they ensure that, that the pictures and illustrations relate to our life so their message is told and that we understand it. But the greatest communicator is Jesus Christ. Jesus communicated through parables. He told stories and he gave illustrations of life that people could relate to. So today we'd like to look at the parable of the sower. Luke 8, 4-15 While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from, the town, from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. So who is this farmer that we've been talking about? And what is the seed? The farmer represents God and the seed is his message. The message that is sown is found in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Christ crucified, Christ buried, and Christ resurrected. Just like a seedling planted in the garden, it will start to grow. The word of God is the same, yesterday, today, and forever. The word of God starts to deepen from the moment that seed is planted. Verse five, as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on and the birds ate it up. So the birds here in this parable represent Satan, the devil, the great deceiver, the one who prowls around like a roaring, roaring lion looking to devour. You know, the seed on the path represents those who hear the word of God and they hear the message, but it immediately falls away. Now, I know myself, you know, in the early days, I would spend, you know, a lot of time you know, going to different churches, different denominations, and lifting up my hands and confessing Jesus as Lord of my life. But as soon as I got home, the word fell away and I fell back into my sinful nature and the things of the world that I was doing. You know, it is so easy for us, even as Christians today, to get distracted with the things of this world. You know, Satan is very good at convincing us that we only need a little bit of faith and we only need to know a little bit about Jesus. Because when it comes down to it, Satan's okay if we know Jesus, but he doesn't want us to really have that intimate relationship. So he'll allow us to go to church and he'll allow us to sing worship and he'll allow us to, to do the things that we do. But when it comes down to it, if we start to get too close and have too much of an intimate relationship with Jesus and, and we're seeing things happening and working in our life and the lives of others that we are with and that we're ministering to, then Satan will do everything he can to stop it in its tracks. He is the great deceiver and he's very good at throwing up smoke screens so that we, or so that our focus can be drawn away from Christ. But the truth is, is that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross of Calvary. You know, he was buried and he rose again so you could have eternal life. It was because of his precious blood that your sins and my sins have been forgiven. Amen? And that was done so that we could finally have an intimate relationship with God. You know, it is Jesus Christ or nothing. Jesus Christ wants to have an intimate relationship with you today, right now. You know, don't allow the birds of the air, as in this parable, don't allow Satan to take away your joy. Don't even allow, allow him to take away your peace. Don't allow him to take away your hope because Jesus Christ is enough and he died for you and for me for the forgiveness of our sins. Verse 6, some fell on rocky ground and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Some seed fell on the rocky ground. It soon sprouted, but there was little soil for it to take hold of. And when the sun came up, it burnt the young seedlings. These seedlings are those Christians who are so enthusiastic responding to the word of God when they first hear it. They're on fire for months, they're passionate, and they can even stay in the church and part of the programs for months, even years. 
but unfortunately the word hasn't completely sunk in and it doesn't take much a few hard times circumstances in life that they just don't see coming and then all of a sudden they fall away this rings so true to many Christians today they have their faith based on emotions and feelings on hype and entertainment on following the popular crowd what's cool what's not and the little depth that they do have the knowledge and revelation God has already given them it doesn't get nurtured or grown and so they fail to walk consistently in their faith more interested in being relevant than having the revelation of God's word in their heart. This can also represent people who are just seeking after the signs and wonders. Christians who look for the miracles, look for the, uh, the great moves of God. And there's nothing wrong with seeking after God and, and, and seeing those wonders. That's definitely part of what God intended for us as, as his believers. But when we're seeking the gift and not the giver, we don't have much of a foundation to fall back on when the times do get tough because we're looking for the gift and not the giver. We're trying to find the answer within the, the wonders and the signs rather than the one who's established them. Verse 7. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. The thorn bushes, particularly today for, for ministers and pastors, can be the three Gs the gold, the glory, and the girls. You know, the gold may be seeking fame and seeking riches through your ministry. You know, the glory may be seeking own self-personal recognition and climbing that ladder in whatever denomination you may be. Or the glory may be seeking the gifts of God above your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And that, unfortunately, I think is... A really big concern today within the church we're all seeking signs and wonders and power but we need to seek Jesus who gives those and the Holy Spirit who gives those before we start running and chasing after them it all begins with an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ you know this could also be or the thorns could also be people who you know are living their lives for approval for others you know they, it could be people who you know, worry too much about what people say, you know, that they be people become jealous, they become angry, or they become so concerned with materialistic things of this world. Verse 8. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop, a hundred times more than was sown. When he said this, he called out, whoever has ears, let him hear. The good soil represents people who have received the message of the gospel. They have believed in the Lord as their saviour and as their friend. When all we need is to have that true relationship with Jesus because it is from him and through him and in him that our answers come, that our strength comes from when we are wondering what's going to happen next, when we're going through those hard times, when we're facing things alone, we know that Christ is the one who is with us. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us. You know, more and more people are turning away from the church and an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ today. You know, what soil are you planted in? Please take the time today or later this evening to read over this parable and allow God to reveal to you where you are at and where you are planted. You know, it's not too late to allow God to repot you in good soil. It's not too late to admit and say, hey God, I haven't quite got it right. Allow him to plant you in new composty, wormy soil so your roots can become deep in, the in his foundations. And his foundations is the word of God and an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. If you focus on your relationship with Jesus and you focus on the word of God, then everything else will fall in place. Be that signs and wonders or whatever you are seeking, if it is God's will, then it will happen. Don't rush ahead. Allow yourself to be planted and watered so you can grow and mature. And God will use you for his glory, but he will use you in his timing. So guys, thank you for joining us. We hope you got something out of today's study. If you have any comments, please drop them down below. 
or better still, send us an email to pleasejustaskus at gmail.com and we'd be happy to answer your questions. And don't forget, Sunday, 10 a.m. on this channel, our online church service. Bless you guys. Have a wonderful week. Bye.